So I think one of the first starting points is to understand what avian influenza is. And there's basically two types of avian influenza. There's low path and high path. And the current outbreak is high path. And this is, this is the disease that's of great concern to us. It's spread between birds, from bird to bird, but also can be spread through contaminated body fluids and feces and also through feed, dirty vehicles, etc. So obviously there's a need that we, we all need to play a part to minimise the spread of it. So what happens when avian influenza is con confirmed? So it's important to understand there's, there's two areas here that we need to be cognizant of. And the first one is we'll look at confirmed cases in kept birds. And this basically, is, what happens is that if avian influenza is confirmed in kept birds, so these are, this is poultry, so these are chickens, this, this could be a backyard flock, it could be a, a large chicken unit, it can include game birds when they're kept. So for instance, if pheasants are on a rearing field, they would be deemed as kept birds and if they were found to have avian influenza, this process that I'm going to talk about would come into play. So when avian influenza is suspected, you must report it to the government agency. It's a legal requirement to do so. So there, there are the contact details on the BASC website. If you suspect avian influenza, don't delay. Get in touch with the helpline at the government and report it. And what will happen is if it's suspected, control zones will be put in place. And these are, these are what we call disease control zones. And they fall into two main categories for, for, for poultry. Um, these are a protection zone, which is three kilometers round the infected premises or the suspected infected premises. And then a seven kilometer zone around the three kilometre zone, which is called the surveillance zone. So you've got, in total, 10 kilometres around the suspected premises, and then if it's confirmed, the confirmed premises. And one of the questions that we get asked is, how do you know where these zones are? And the government have actually made it very easy. So there's, there's several ways you can do that. If you look on the Basque website, the government have got um, a mapping tool that you can find the link, click on it, and it shows where all the zones are. Another thing that's a really good idea for people to do is to sign up for what's known as the AFA alert. So this is the Animal, Plant and Health Agency. And these are alerts that get sent to your phone to tell you of where these disease outbreaks occur. Once, the, once these zones have been put in place, there are legal requirements that you must comply with. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details of these because it's important that you're aware of all of them and you can find out the links on the website to, to show exactly what they are. Probably the main one for shooting, which isn't really topical at this time of year, but that is if you're in a disease control zone, you cannot release game birds. So that's, that's probably the main one, but it's really important that people understand all the different requirements. You may actually see something called the captive bird monitoring zone. It's, it's very similar to the, it's a disease control zone, but that's actually for other species, uh, other bird species, not poultry. So um, it could be birds at a rescue center, for instance. So that's, that's, the, that's the kept bird side of things. There's also another there's another term that you may have heard of, which is called the avian influenza prevention zone. So the zones that I've spoken about up to now are put in place when there is a confirmed case in kept birds. The avian influenza pre prevention zone, or AIPZ for short, has been put in place across the whole UK. And an important point to remember is that looking after managing avian influenza is, is a dissolved matter. So it's done by each of the home countries. However, they're all working very closely together. So what is likely to happen in one country is likely to happen in another. But again, it's another reason why you need to check the relevant websites to know that you're up to, to speed. And the AIPZ is basically to prevent the, sp the spread of avian influenza to captive birds. Now, if you keep birds, so if you happen to have a, 
backyard flock of chickens, there are legal requirements that you must comply with with, with regards biosecurity. In addition, in parts of the east of the country, there's also a housing order. So again, this is one of the reasons why it's really important to keep up to date with the latest information. So that's the side of things with kept birds. And then we come on to wild birds. So what happens with wild birds is, is slightly different because obviously if you've got kept birds, you can put measures in place to, to stop the disease. Whereas it's gonna be extremely difficult, if not impossible to stop the spread between two wild birds living out in the wild, as it were. So the government also have a scheme though of monitoring wild birds. So, so I'm gonna call it findings of wild birds. And again, there's information on the website, but if you find wild birds, certain number that, that are dead in certain circumstances, you should report these to the relevant agency. This is where wild pheasants would fall. So once released, living in the wild, wild pheasants would fall under this category because they are wild birds. And what happens is when you report to the helpline, some people have advised that the government have said, well, we don't want to collect the birds that you found. And it's important to understand what the purpose of the monitoring is for. So it's to understand where the spread of avian influenza is rather than how many birds have actually been infected with it. So if you call the helpline, um, again, details on the BAS website, if you call the helpline and the government don't want to collect all the birds, you know, that may be the case. And one of the questions that we get asked uh, quite, quite a bit is fo following this, is if birds, if there are wild birds on your ground, should you actually collect them? So the best advice is to be guided by the government. So if you've re rung in, reported these birds, be guided by what the relevant civil servants tell you, what the scientists say. There are specific rules though that you must be aware of with regards to the movement of, of birds with suspected avian influenza. For instance, they would be classed as category one waste. There are a number of requirements that come into play and, and rather than Rather than pick certain elements out, which could miss a really important point, again, check the website. There are lots of links there of where you need to go to. Excuse me a moment. So within the disease, going back to the disease control zones and the AIPZ, can shooting continue? Yes, there are no restrictions on shooting at the moment. Game birds, Shot game birds can still be moved within the zones. Um, so shooting can still continue. One of the things that you may find is that um, if you are in a disease control zone, your game dealer may not want to take the birds off you whilst the disease control is, zone is in force. These disease control zones can be lifted within 30 days um, once they've actually been, been cleaned as it were. Um, but again, this is one of the reasons why you need to check the website where the zones are, etc. Um, so the game dealer may not want to take the bird, so you'd obviously have to have some other thoughts in place. Um, so what can we do? You know, this is, this is one of the things we all want to play our part to stop the spread of avian influenza. So what can we do? And absolutely, biosecurity is key. And, you know, we should be taking steps to minimize the spread of the disease. But that doesn't mean that we've got to take really onerous steps. We can take some really practical, easy steps that will actually help minimize it. So come up, come up, have a look at your shoot, have a look at your own shooting activities and, and think about, you know, three key, key elements. How can we reduce, reduce the risk of transmission between wild birds and kept birds? So for instance, if you've got kept birds, there are legal requirements now under the AIPZ, but think about, have you been shooting? Have you got a change of footwear when you go to feed the chickens, etc.? How can you disinfect that sort of thing? Um, the other thing that we need to do is we need to think about reducing the risk of transmission onto a shoot from another shoot by the beaters and guns, pickers up, etc. So again, um, 
little simple things. So if we're thinking, if we think about a shoot that's maybe got um, a pen of chickens on there near, near where you meet, meet somewhere else. Think about things like foot dips, and I'll touch on those in a, in a minute. Um, and this ties in with the other element about not, re, you know, for gamekeepers and people working on the shoots, not transmitting the disease between parts of the shoot. So um, sensitive areas, maybe wash the vehicle down, bit of spray, make sure you've got clean footwear, perhaps do the pens in a certain order. So it, it doesn't really need to be onerous to be effective. When we look at foot dips, again, this, this, is, this is a key point. Um, there's no point in doing things if you don't do things properly. So if you're going to dip your feet in a foot dip, there's no point in dipping them if they're covered in mud. So wash them off first and then dip them because all you'll be doing is just treating the outside of the mud and still having the risk later on. Um, Moving on, so one of, one of the questions that we get asked is around dogs. And dogs, dogs from two elements. So um, dogs, from, dogs from the element of the potential for them to spread AI and also the potential of AI on, on dogs, as it were. And I'm just going to, I'm just trying to find the relevant bit, bit of advice on this with regards um, dogs and basically so the, i mentioned afa earlier and they've done a risk assessment in relation to the spread of ai from wild birds to poultry and there is no evidence of dogs becoming infected with avian influenza by retrieving shot wildfowl or game birds however there is evidence from abroad of things such as foxes and coyotes scavenging uh, and then becoming infected so again it's all about taking suitable precautions, um, such as not feeding uncooked bird meat to, to dogs. Um, you wouldn't feed it to birds of prey. You know, if people who keep birds of prey, there's similar advice not to feed it to them. Um, and, and basically, if you're taking a dog for a walk, don't let it go scavenging. All the things that we would normally do. Um, you know, ultimately, the advice is well cooked birds can be safely consumed by humans and animals alike. So when we're looking at the spread of disease from shoot to shoot, um, it may be, in certain circumstances, it may be appropriate to wash your dog after the shoot day. And I think the ultimate bit of advice here is that whether it's us or a dogs, we should, we should be working to, to make sure that we're not the things that spread the disease between areas. So think about what you're doing and plan accordingly. So um, I've, I've seen some strange advice out there that, that's, that's doing the rounds on things that you can give your dogs to prevent them doing X, Y, and Z. I think we need to be really careful here that we don't give dogs things that they shouldn't be having. So if you've got any doubt at all, always consult your vet on this sort of thing. Your vet is the person to go to. Um, I think that's really the main of the questions that we have. Um, the, key, the key, though, is that we can all play our part in preventing the spread of avian influenza. Um, there's, lots of, there's lots of information going around, lots of thoughts, and it's important that we get the right information, we use the right information. So I would stress, if you go to the Basque website, the latest information is on there with links to the relevant government advice. If you've got any questions at all, if you get in touch with your country or regional officer at BASC, they'll, they'll do the best to help. So thank you for listening. Any questions, as I say, get in touch with your regional or country team at BASC and we'll do our best to help you. Thank you. <laughs>